It's been a while since I've said this, but that's how the Seattle Mariners are built to win baseball games. Dominant starting pitching, bullpen does its job, offense runs into a couple home runs and gives you just enough to have the victory. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into to Seattle Mariners post-game recap. Mariners defeat the Rays tonight 5-1. to one. They improved to 67-65 and 65 on the season. And thanks to the Phillies and Bryce Harper walking off the Astros, Mariners are three and a half back in the AL West. So, you know, listen, I, I've said that, um, you know, get to September, get to that, excuse me, get to that Astro series one, two games back, and you'll at least be in a position where if you can win that series or sweep it, you will have a shot. Before I dive any further into this recap, do me a favor, hit the like button, go ahead and do that right now for me. It helps out the video tremendously. Comment your thoughts on this game down below. And don't forget if you're new, lurking, or just want to support a Mariners content creator, please hit that subscribe button. I'm eight subs away from 4,100. Would love to hit that number tonight, um, especially as we get to the home stretch of the baseball season here. So it has been quite a ride, and I've enjoyed doing it with, with all of you and all the interactions. So thank you all so much for the support as always. But yeah, I mean, you know, listen, this isn't where I thought this team would be on August 27th, just two games over 500. Um, it's certainly not where I thought they'd be after they had a 10 game lead in June. So there's still a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of things that, you know, barring a, a huge run here, we're going to really have to dive into in the off season. But for right now, you know, if you take away the fact they blew a 10 game lead, which you, you shouldn't, but if you can kind of get past that, they're not in a bad spot right now at three and a half, you've likely got going to have the tie break over Houston. And truthfully, to some extent, it doesn't really matter because if you lose the series, you know, Houston would have to sweep you to win the tie break. And if they sweep you, you're going to be done anyways. So if the Mayors are going to win the division, they're going to have the tiebreakers. That make kind of sense what I'm saying there. So there's a good chance you'll have that. You're still three games with Houston. You're in this thing, right? You, they are. They, they are in this. And, you know, you got two games left here with Tampa with Logan and Castillo going. Houston's in Philly playing a really good Phillies team. Then you go on the road and play the Angels who have given you fits, but it's still a team on paper you should be beating along with Oakland. We know that's not how it's gone this season for the team, but they are very beatable teams. And St. Louis as well, who's, I think, beatable. Um, so, you know, you got a shot here. You got a shot to at least cut into this lead a little bit. And if you can get me to that Houston series one, two games back, I'll be okay. For all things considered, right? It's, again, not where I wanted to be in June when they had a 10-game lead. But for everything that's happened through the brutal road trip, through the managerial change, I can stomach that. I, I could stomach that, and it would at least give you a shot, right? Maybe you can go in there with your big three going. Offense has a big series. You sweep it. Who knows? You know, anything is possible in baseball. So uh, certainly, again, not the ideal spot, but they have climbed back into this thing a little bit here. So hopefully they can keep taking advantage. You know, if they can make up one game each series, I, I, feel, I, I will feel pretty good about that. You don't have to get it all at once. Just kind of chip away, and that's what they've done. They made up a game during the Giants series. And they make up a game on Houston tonight. So, you know, a, a, certainly a very productive night for the Mariners. And with that said, a really nice win, right? A, a pretty relaxed win. The bats come alive and do enough. I cannot say enough good things about Bryce Miller. It's kind of funny. You know, Brian Brian, uh, Brian Wu has been so dominant, and so has Bryce Miller. It's actually the big three that have struggled a little bit their last few outings. Castillo was not great in Pittsburgh and not great against the Giants. Uh, Logan was... You know, I, I thought, okay, he was fine in Pittsburgh, but you'd like to see a little bit better and struggled a bit in L.A. Uh, Kirby was not great against the Giants and then was awful in that start. Detroit was pretty good in Pittsburgh, but they've been a little more sporadic. Wu and Miller have really been locked in. I know Bryce wasn't fantastic in L.A., um, but he certainly wasn't awful either. And then he throws seven, you know, innings of two-hit, one-run ball tonight. Just phenomenal. You know, you would think coming down the stretch that Wu and Miller would be the ones wearing down. I'm not implying the other three are wearing down, but man, where would this team be without Brian Wu and Bryce Miller? Uh, cannot say enough good things about these guys. And, you know, it just goes to show it doesn't always have to be a veteran that steps up. Sometimes the young guys can deliver uh, as well. And it's a sensational start tonight for Bryce. Miller. I know the Rays offense has been scuffling, but that's what you're supposed to do, right? You know, you go out there and you dominate them. Bryce goes seven innings, two hits, one run, one earned on the low home run. No walks, 10 strikeouts, tying a career high. For Bryce Miller, and he lowers his season you know, ERA to 3.23. I mean, just incredible what him and Brian Wu are doing. You know, I think, again, they get kind of overshadowed because this rotation is so good. We've kind of grown to expect these kind of starts. 
this is not normal. And it's another reason why it'd be great to get this team in the playoffs. You'd hate to waste what you're getting from the rotation. That's a debate for another time, though, I think. Right now, it's just, you know, enjoy it because this is a very special run uh, that these guys are having. There would have been a time, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, we'd be looking at Bryce Miller going, man, this is the next big thing. And I feel like even, you know, for me personally, he gets kind of thrown in the, yeah, Bryce is fine. He's not just fine. He is really, really good. Uh, what a second year for Bryce Miller. I've been super impressed. And again, more importantly for him and Brian Wu, you know, last year they kind of wore down in September, which makes sense as rookies. They have not had that happen to them this year. This is their first full big league, first full year in the big league. So kudos to them, you know, uh, for holding up. Now there's still a month to go, but uh, they have been absolutely phenomenal. And, and Bryce Miller continued it today. And he gives you some length in this game and he saved the bullpen as well. Uh, Austin Voth with a shutout, eighth with a strikeout. And Trent Thornton with a couple strikeouts tonight in the ninth. Thornton has pitched better his last few outings. Again, you know, you're you got a bullpen that's dealing with Jimmy Garcia being out. Sounds like he may be back in a couple weeks, which was surprising. I just kind of assumed he'd be out for the year. Not sure what's going on with Santos. It seems to be a little bit of physical and mental going on with him with some of the injury stuff. Um, you know, we'll see if he gets back out there. And obviously we know with Matt Brash being down, you need all hands on deck. And if Trent Thornton can kind of find what he had a little bit in April and May, where again, he wasn't perfect, but he was serviceable. It'll go a long way to helping this team, you know, win some more games in September. So good to see, uh, from the pitching staff. Again, Tampa Bay's offense really scuffling, but you know, then, but they shut them out. You know, you can't, if a defense in football is playing the worst offense in football and they shut them down, you can't go, they were lucky. That's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to dominate. That's what good teams do to bad teams. Not saying the Rays are bad. I should say good units do to bad units. Mariners pitching, Rays offense. That's a better way to look at that. So a uh, great job by the pitching staff today and hopefully it carries over to tomorrow. Offensively, strikeouts down a little bit again. Eight uh, strikeouts today for the Mariners. Good to see only one walk, um, but they do collect seven hits, five runs. You know, Pepio probably a little unlucky that was it the fourth inning with the um, three runs? The third inning, you know, Julio reaches on the air. Cal gets a little infield hit. And then Randy Land goes deep for his first home run in T-Mobile. Really good to see. You know, I've talked about hopefully this offense can get hot. I'll dive into a little bit more here, but going back to Pepio a bit, you know, that's kind of the innings that the Mariners have been giving up recently in their stretch, it feels like. An error, a little bloop, or a little dribbler, and then the three-run home run. It just feels like it's spiraled for this team. Nice to see the Mariners... Um, doing it to somebody else for once and another team being on the receiving end of it. You know, and listen, putting up five runs against Pepio, who's been outstanding his last few outings and really solid all season as the RA sits at 3.61, a nasty changeup, throws a ton of strikes. So good to see right now. Again, that's what I was trying to bring up with the luck. They, they got a couple guys on that were fortunate to be on, but they took advantage of it, right? Like we've seen so many times, like I just said, where the Mariners have been on the other end of that. And then the Mariners do get the breaks. They don't take advantage of it. So it was really good to see uh, Randy put that one into the seats. Polanco gets the solo home run. So I thought they did pretty well against Pepio. You know, not amazing lights out, but they found a way to put up five runs. And again, with this offense, I'm not going to complain when they squeak out a few runs. And then Leo Rivas had a big RBI single. So really, really good. You know, again, some loud innings, some quiet innings. That's kind of what at this, at the best, the offense is going to be right. They're going to have lulls where they're just not very good, but you hope they get a couple of those big innings. And that's kind of what they were built to do. And that's what they did tonight. So it was good to see good offensive performance. I didn't realize against the giants they only had three extra base hits that entire series. Um, they kept mentioning that in the broadcast, I obviously want to see more of that. And they did more of it tonight. Um, the two home runs, and then they had two doubles. So they had more extra base hits tonight They did than they did the entire series against the Giants. But they also worked a lot of walks against the Giants. So you know, I think it balances out a little bit. I think that, I don't think the stat's misleading. You want to see, that was my frustration with the Giants series, weren't putting any balls in the gap to really clean up the bases and, and get those big innings. But uh, they did have some better at-bats, I thought, and they put up five runs tonight. So, so far, the Dan Edgar era has been better offensively, I think. Probably just a four-game sample. Probably doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot for the offensive performance. Again, I think it's going to take a full off season for Edgar and Dan to really work with these guys. But so far, so good, right? Um, you know, and Dan's three and one as manager. And I do think there is something to it. Maybe not exactly how they're winning, but the but the fact that they are winning. I, I think you know, with everything spiraling, you know, nobody in that clubhouse is an idiot. They know that Scott's job was probably on the line here. 
And whether they liked Scott or not, there was probably some added pressure, right? Like you don't want to be the guy that strikes out and that causes your manager to be fired. Um, you, you know, and it, you know, that's whether you like Scott or not. And if they liked him, that puts even more pressure on because you don't want him to lose his job. So you're pressing a little bit. So I think that's another reason it was a good decision to make. Truthfully, it probably should have happened earlier in the season, but you know, it is what it is. They, they, they did pull the plug. Um, you know, and, and I think it's made the team play a little looser. And I think that also helps with Dan not having the interim title either a little bit. We could argue if they should have gone through a more thorough search for the next manager. I think that's a fair point to make. Um, I know Ty and Colby talked about that on Locked On Mariners, and I think it's a completely fair point. But I do think there is some benefit to not putting that interim tag on Dan. And I think it allows the team to, okay, this is your guy. This is the guy that's going to be here for you. So I don't need to panic that, you know, somebody else is coming in next year and they got Dan this year. It's Dan's job. Um, and if you heard the quote from Goldie, you know, he, uh, I don't know if he said it on the radio and something this morning, but that, you know, all these guys have really um, taken to Dan Wilson. So I, I think it's been a good hire. And so far on the field, it, it is paying off for the Mariners for sure. So let's get into the box score offensively. Luke Rayleigh, one for four with a double against his old mates. Uh, Julio continues to scuffle, 0 for four. Really a shame because Julio was hot before he got hurt. Um, you know, we talked about needing hot streaks from these guys down the stretch. We know what this offense is. It's below average at best. That's probably being kind, but you're looking for those hot streaks, right? With 30 something games left, you just need a couple hot streaks from guys and, and just waiting for that one from Julio. Good news is they've won three out of the last four without Julio getting going. So hopefully when he does, if he does, uh, it'll help carry the team to a few wins. Cal was one for three with a hit by pitch. His one hit was certainly not crushed. But we'll take it, right? It's good to see a little fortune um, come the Mariners' way um, after a tough couple months there. So Cal gets that infield hit, and he was hit by a pitch, so Cal on base twice. Randy Rosarina, one for three with the three-run home run, and he gets hit by a pitch, of course. Uh, Randy has replaced Ty France as the hit-by-pitch merchant, but Randy on base twice as well. Good to see the home run crush the opposite way against his old team. Uh, me and Mariner Sir were kind of DMing a little bit this morning afternoon. Wondering if Randy playing against his old guys would kind of allow him to play a little looser, have a little more fun, and maybe he does something. And sure enough, he did. Now, I don't know if it was because he was playing his old teammates and maybe it helped him relax a little bit, or if Randy was just due to hit one out of T-Mobile, but that is his first T-Mobile home run. Uh, really good to see. And again, talking about the hot streaks, they're going to need it, right? And this team is a team of streaky hitters. Cal is streaky, Julio streaky, Randy streaky. I think Luke Rayleigh can be a streaky hitter. Um, who else am I missing on this team? I mean, you know, every hitter in baseball can be streaky to an extent, but it really feels like more than any other team, the Mariners really have a lot of those guys. So hopefully this is the start of a hot streak for Randy or Rosarina. Uh, they could definitely use it. Jorge Polanco, one for four at the solo home run. Again, probably the most consistent hitter for this team in the second half of the year. I would like to see Polanco moved up in the order a little bit. Um, I think he'd be perfect in that number two spot. Julio's really scuffling. I, I think you move him down a little bit, put Polanco in the two hole. Um, Rayleigh seems to be doing okay in the leadoff role, um, but I put Polanco number two. Again, not a huge deal. I don't put a ton of stock in the batting order. I mean, either have good hitters or you don't. I, I don't know how much shuffling them around really matters in the long run. If you're not good, you're just, you don't have good hitters. If you are good, you got good hitters. But I do think there are ways to optimize a lineup, and I think Polanco hitting a little higher. Uh, could benefit the team. But you can also make the case he's hitting well in the fifth spot, so why mess with it? So I, I, I get that as well. Uh, Justin Turner was 0 for 4, was robbed of a hit by uh, DeLuca. Uh, Josh Rojas, 2 for 4 with a double and a base hit. Josh heating up a little bit. Nice game last night. Good game today. Again, any hot streak you can get from someone, you will take. So hopefully, you know, Josh can have a nice final month and, and help this team uh, a lot. Dom Canzone, 0 for 2 with a walk. Um, and Leo Rivas, one for two at the RBA single. Rivas, just kind of a gamer, you know, good defensive player um, and, and just puts, you know, bat on ball, makes contact, gives you a good at bat, works the count well. Really impressed with Leo Rivas. It'll be interesting what they do when J.P. Crawford comes back. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they just wait till September 1st and activate him. I think that's possible. He was in the dugout today, so. And we still have a few days till September, so they could make a move. I think Canzone is the obvious option to go down. Um, I don't think you can send Leo Rivas down. You just can't. He's been too valuable. 
In terms of what you do for playing time, you know, me and Mariner Sir had this discussion as well, and we'll probably talk about it Thursday when he hops on. But, you know, I, I, I think you maybe try Rivas at second, uh, let Polanco DH a little bit, JP at short, Rojas at third. Um, it allows Dylan Moore to be used as kind of a pinch runner and play the outfield a little bit. Uh, you can get Rivas a day off. Polanco can play second. JP might need some days off. Rivas can play short. You know, against lefties, Dylan Moore can play there. So it's a good problem to have. It's going to allow some more roster flexibility, and it's going to make your bench a little bit deeper too because you have Polanco DH. Then you've got Mitch Hanniger on the bench. You know, you've got Dylan Moore on the bench. You know, you've got guys that are like, listen, getting 500 bats, do I love those guys? No, but we've seen Mitch Hanniger be good in some clutch spots this year. Dylan Moore can run into one and walk occasionally. So it, it does stretch out that lineup a little bit in the roster. So I think it's a good problem to have. Now you want JP to come back and hit more like 2023 JP Crawford. 2024 JP Crawford has been very hit or miss. Um, but I still think it's his position. I still think you put him out there. Shortstop is the captain. Uh, I, I do think you let him play, but I, I definitely think you want to keep Leo Rivas in the lineup. And then if someone gets cold, boom, you know, you, you can move things around pretty easily too. So I think it's a good problem to have, right? You know, you want guys that you're trying to find ways to play them essentially. That That's a good thing to have. We'll see how it plays out for the team, but, uh, you know, looking forward to see. That'll be a nice test for Dan Wilson uh, as well. Nice win today for the Mariners. Get the dub. Always nice to win the first game of a series. Sets you up well to win the series. Um, they have a chance to do that tomorrow with Logan on the mound. Man, it feels like Logan's due for a W. And maybe Philly can take another one from Houston. You can get this to two and a half. Would really, really feel good. Um, you know, again, it, it's certainly after a 10-game lead, not ideal, but it is where they're at. And they've cut into a lead here that was five and a half, gotten it back to three and a half. And here we go, right? We're getting into September baseball. Let's see what this team can do, see if they can find a way. They certainly have the pitching and this offense, you know, it's been disappointing, but it can get streaky and streaky means cold, but also means hot. So hopefully there's a hot streak left in them to get this team in. Should be fun. Should be a fun final month. And if they let us down, you do have the Seahawks coming up here in a couple of weeks to at least take your mind off of it um, on Sundays at the very least. So enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to get out of here. I'm, I'm exhausted. Remember to hit that like button, comment your thoughts down below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Bryce Miller dominates Mariners get the win. Feels good. Take it easy, everybody. And as always go Mariners. Peace.